Um, this one is a little harder to see, but that's my dad, Rocco, and their oldest um, when they went to Kings Dominion. Every summer, Chelchastity Pulling's dad, Robert, took her and her brother to the amusement park. He loved it a lot. Robert seemed to like it as much as the kids, reminded him of when he was a young boy growing up in Henrico. This is my dad as a kid. Chelchastity cherishes those memories. He was very handsome. That now seem like a lifetime ago. This is the real life recovery house and this is the house where my dad was murdered at. When Chelchastity reconnected with the single father who raised her after two years of radio silence, he lived in this house in Richmond's Wickham neighborhood. He wanted to get back on track with his life. He wanted to amend relationships that had been broken. Robert Pauline suffered from schizophrenia, and a court convicted him of possession of a firearm after being involuntarily committed and trespassing. His family says he had stopped taking his medicine. He believed he was in some other world. As part of a sentencing agreement, Pauline went to live at a recovery house run by the Real Life program, even though his family claims he did not have a substance abuse problem got a really good job, he got his license back, He's and he was about to move out. Everything seemed to be going well until November 13th of last year. I have anxiety about it, knowing that this is a place where my dad was killed at. Chell Chastity's father was found inside the home with his hands, feet, and neck tied up with multiple stab wounds to his chest. That's according to a police affidavit. The suspect, the house manager, Kevin Rice, who police say killed pulling and tried to steal his bank card. I don't think he belonged here. I really don't. Now, Chell Chastity and her brother have filed a civil lawsuit against Rice and real life. Here's their lawyer, Noel Brooks, with Brooks and Baez. There's no one overseeing the behavior of not only the participants, but the house managers and the case managers. And there needs to be more oversight of all aspects of the program. The suit alleges real life failed to protect their residents when they accepted Rice into the program and promoted him to house manager within a month. This despite his lengthy criminal history, which included raping a 13 year old girl, failure to register as a sex offender twice, possession of a firearm by a violent felon, eluding police and grand larceny. The kind of person I believe should have been in charge is someone who has changed their life around for the good. Judge Jacqueline McClenney allowed Rice to enter real life as part of a bond agreement in April of 2021, something the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office did not agree with and even appealed. But the judge still approved the bond. A little over a month later, the Deputy Director for Real Life, Jessica Jones, told the court, we are so very proud of Kevin's success and know that he will continue to excel in this letter. And yet, according to the lawsuit, five months later, another resident called a case manager for Real Life, Thomas Young, to report Rice was using drugs, acting violent, and threatening to kill pulling. From what we gather, no action was taken, uh, including but not limited to contacting the police immediately. Pulling was killed that very night. Brooks says the case opened his eyes to the recovery house industry, which has exploded in growth in recent years, but has little state oversight. People hear about an opioid crisis. People hear about different programs that are designed to address that crisis. But I think if people knew uh, the details of these programs and see that these programs are oftentimes uh, receiving grants from local government, state government, federal government without oversight of the grants. And so I think if it was uncovered, people would be aghast. People like Chell Chastity. I try to call his phone uh, just to hear his voice, but it got turned off. Who says she is not convinced a program like Real Life is the answer to the crisis. I don't want any other family to have to go through what me and my brother are going through. I'm sorry.
We reached out to Real Life, but were told they could not comment due to pending litigation. You heard the Pulling family's lawyer talk about a lack of oversight in the recovery house industry. In the coming weeks, we will be taking a deeper look into how these houses are regulated, if at all, what one county is doing to try to ensure recovery house residents and the community are safe, and the benefits they offer to those in recovery.